Yeah. So I know, um, so you used to paper and there's a lot of handwork in it. And um, I, I love process. I love hearing artists process and things. Um, so how was that process for you making all these, you know, origami boxes and the hearts and figuring out the size? How was that for you? And how does that relate to your concept of the, of the installation? Yeah. Well, I definitely, I remember, um, I think the most recent exhibition I had been to at the Cliff Gallery was Lauren Cross's work. And so I, I, at the same time that I got the blueprints, I could remember the space and I, I liked how she used the space. And um, so I, I did do a lot of math and there's, um, there's a lot of um, using the Holy Trinity. That's why there's a lot of threes. Because okay. yeah. uh, I'm, I'm referencing the Holy Trinity and so I used, thirds, I would break things up into thirds um, when thinking about how large things needed to be in doing a repetition on the Holy Trinity. And um, my studio is really narrow and long. It's, um, it's a good enough size for me to uh, be able to uh, work pretty large in there. And so, but I was working on the floor to cut the big banners. I was just getting down on the floor with the Ulfa knife and just running, running down on my hands and knees, <laughs> uh, little by little, cutting the full length of the, the banners and then, um, uh, and sewing, sewing on the floor. Eventually I was like, um, I had to come up with another system cause I'm hurting. <laughs> I'm hurting yeah. and I'm in my forties. I can't <laughs> get up off the floor. And so I, I did start to construct some things. Like we have that, um, that large box that Eric built for me to transport things in and turned it upside down on, um, on top of a couple of storage bins to, work on kind of a makeshift table in there to do a lot of the so chain chain stitch sewing uh, mm -hmm. along the borders and to for the individual letters and then uh, when I was folding the boxes uh, my studio got filled up and so I that's when I had to start invading Eric's studio <laughs> and stacking and stacking to, to store those in there and uh, the origami hearts i did a lot of, of folding those um during the um, artist residency i'm a part of at tcc south uh, chaired by joshua good uh and working in letitia huckabee's classroom as well um and um the uh the chinese lanterns i wanted those to be like the those kind of orb lights that you see in all kinds of churches, whether it's Catholic churches, Baptist churches, Episcopal churches, Presbyterian, whatever kind of the, the I've, uh, yeah, I've only been, yeah, I think even I've been to some synagogues. I think even, and I think I've even seen these in synagogues just because they're just very simple hanging from one wire, just an orb of glowing light and I wanted the Chinese lanterns to be kind of like that and that's what we, we cut the these small paper plates to be the oh my gosh Eric told me the technical term for this sketch is sketching <laughs> plate <laughs> for the connection um and yeah, that's it. But yeah, it's I it was pretty rough with all the paper. Um and I uh I need to make some donations to uh either ACLU or Planned Parenthood or some other organization <laughs> for for where I got the paper from. I won't I won't give any shout outs. <laughs> but it was nice to um I didn't end up having to get those huge spools of the bulletin board paper. Thank goodness. I got just the right size. Perfect. And um, 
I still have a whole bunch of newspaper print left over though. Mm -hmm. So um, a couple things come to mind, um, thinking about the concepts that um, you work on. And um, one thing we really haven't fully talked about is as you address things that are related to your Catholic background, like the Trinity and that kind of thing, would you call this a religious installation? Um, maybe references to um, spirituality. Um, uh, I definitely, I feel like, I feel like that's a, a, a personal, a personal thing for everyone. And I definitely uh, have a strong respect for um, whatever people, whatever avenue um, each individual needs to pursue in order to have that relationship or not a uh, uh, atheist. Um, I'm, I'm agnostic myself. Uh, race Catholic agnostic now to and to to me the definition of that for me is um, I do believe that there is um, something that connects us all that's bigger than ourselves uh, but it is not something that can be defined or contained um, by human definitions or um, um, construct so um, that's why that's why I call myself agnostic now mm -hmm. um, so I I shy away from calling it religious because I um, I mean I have my I have my problems with <laughs> I have my problems with um, organized religion but I respect it at, I respect at the same time um, the community and ritual of um, organized religion and so understand if um, that's the way that some individuals need to foster their personal relationship with their higher power. And um, so hopefully, um, Hopefully anything that's coming across um, isn't disrespectful, but um, leaves it open for everyone, atheist or, or not. So it makes sense, as all artists kind of do, is the, the construct, what came out, is all part of who, who you, your life experience, you know, and it just ended up being that space made sense to have this particular type of structures. Um, and so then the other thing I wanted to mention and I have you talk about just a little bit is the two tabernacles or is it mm -hmm. the tabernacles, right? The ones that have um, patriarchy and the Yes. The Starboxes that are the tabernacles with the paper hearts. Yes, those are the tabernacles. Right. And I'm uh, I'm defining those as the um, the place where you would get the Eucharist from, um, in reference to yes, my Catholic upbringing. So you have white supremacy on one and patriarchy on the other. So could, do you mind talking about that? No, oh, I um, I think in my um, visualization of the installation uh, on a whole, their place in the installation is um, mm, well. When we think of it, for instance, uh, in the U.S., we have never had uh, a woman uh, president or vice president. Um, and women constitute um, over half of the population. Um, and there are reasons for that. Um, and then with uh, white supremacy, um, I mean, I feel, I feel like things are definitely improving these days, but uh, they're, um, 
these are these are two um, two factors in um, social constructs that can be um, ubiquitous but hidden, kind of and in, in, insidious. Um, and when people try to shine a light on them, sometimes it can be hard to explain to people that don't experience it. Mm -hmm. For them, a, a lot of times um, it's not real or, or it's, it's in the past, that was something that used to happen, but things are better now. And so we don't, we don't need to address it kind of an attitude. And so with the, with the tabernacle containing the Eucharist, which is distributed, um, in my mind, I felt like it was a kind of a innocuous, ubiquitous presentation of information in a very deliberate way, which is how I feel white supremacy and patriarchy are distributed and um, inform every facet of our society. So it's not like you're endorsing it or promoting it. It is a statement. You're, you're making this, um, you're making this statement about what is and what has had effect. I, that's how, that's, that's how it comes across for me in my mind, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm hoping that I presented it though in a way that's not um, preachy or, um, um, that just leaves it, leaves it, leaves a space for, um, for people to just think about it and come up with questions and conversations and um it absolutely <laughs> does it really does and it has and in my experience with different people coming inside even so the placement of it where it is as well as the beautiful calligraphy the small labels that everything about it is it's matter of fact it's like matter of fact it's not a scream it's not a beating against your head or anything like that um so there's several things about it that that work in the way that you wanted it to in my opinion and i and i'm experiencing that i'm saying this as an experience of having people interact with it and and it dawns on them and some people actually miss it and and that's not a surprise, and I know you're okay with that. Mm hmm Cause yeah, that because that's that's how it happens. <laughs> <laughs> it's Can like you're for real. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that's uh the scratch paper um mm. with a, a pointed nib is how I uh made those labels. That's right. It's scratched in Wow. So Fabi, do you have thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I was just gonna say a comment. Um, like, I like that you leave it open for people to think about their own experiences. Mm -hmm. um, I really do enjoy that aspect of, of all of it. Um, also myself, as someone that was raised Catholic, um, it makes me think a lot too about what, what it means to me, you know, and just having you speak about how it's distributed and how sometimes we just, you just grow up with it, you know, and the way, and then you start getting older and you start realizing certain things and you're, you're just like, that doesn't feel right, you know? Um, so it's a lot of investigation with self and um, I just think you did a really great job in letting the viewer do that um, within your work. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That means a lot, because yeah, that's a, I, 
I, I definitely, um, I don't want to come off like I'm speaking for a particular, like I'm the one speaking for everyone in a particular group of any kind. I, I definitely don't want to come across like that. And I want to, want to leave it open to intersectionalism and um, also want to make Pan-African connections where I can. Mm. I feel like I'd like to, to explain or like describe one experience really quickly um, with a group of students. And um, I, I believe what it was, was um, an older student bringing in potential students to the campus and they looked at the exhibition and um, this guy who's African-American and he's probably in his twenties, he, he, looked around and he was really enjoying the colors and the structures and things like that. And then he goes, oh, there's a lot of threes. There's triplets, there's three of things. Mm -hmm. And he kept asking me questions and I really wanted him as you've requested. And I think it's important for him to kind of discover these things himself. Mm -hmm. So he goes, and it feels like a church. Mm -hmm. So he kept going and getting closer and closer and closer. And then he goes, oh, the Trinity. And then they all kind of were like, oh, the Trinity, the Trinity. And then one of the girls walked over to the tabernacle, <laughs> one of them. And she said, come over here, guys, you know. And they looked at the sign and it said white supremacy. And they all like almost like fell out. They just were like, what do we do with this? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Exactly. It was so good. So that's awesome. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Hello. Okay. Here we go. Can y'all still hear me? Yeah. Oh, there you are. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Can y'all see that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. These are yeah, some movies and books. that have influenced me over the years mm -hmm. and some that I've been reading dur during my time of working on this exhibition in particular and watching. <laughs> so are you going to do a pan and then will you go in and kind of focus on some of them? So yes. Good. Yeah, the White Witch of Rose Hall. My friend Karen Kanjimi, she actually gave me that book. And I'm so happy she did. I'll talk about that one. Wow. Yeah. All right. Okay, and then I will switch back. All right, and I'll highlight this one, the mother of us all. Is that coming in backwards or am I just seeing? <laughs> no, it, it, it looks, it's forwards. Okay, but yeah. Um, I really enjoy reading this one. Uh, I uh, Queen Nanny, she is a real martyr that was active in the 1700s uh, as the leader of the Windward Jamaican Maroons. And she's on the 500 note of uh, the Jamaican dollar. And as I said, she was active in the 1700s and she was only recognized in 1976 in Jamaica wow. as um, a, an instrumental person in um, the rebellion against uh, British rule. And I'll, I'll, read, I'll read a little, little excerpt here. The elements described above that are important in 
formation of windward maroon identity described above appear to be quite related one to the other. History, the importance of ancestors, the supernatural, the legend of Queen Nanny, and the Maroon's military achievements all stem from the same locus within the collective consciousness of the Maroon people. So she was really, really important. And um, it's just been, um, it's, it's been really enriching to read about her and uh, feel a sense of pride in my Jamaican heritage, but also, um, see that uh, the patriarchy, of course, is a worldwide thing. Um, they suppressed uh, uh, the Jamaican um, historians and uh, um, government and whoever else seemed to only mention her um, very sparingly in um, the history books in Jamaica, but eventually, like I said, 1976 recognized her and she's on the 500 um, dollar, uh, Jamaican dollar. And, um, yeah, I just, that she's a woman and that she was so important to the Jamaican Maroons in terms of military strategy, uh, spirituality, um, history, um, nurturing, uh, just, all of these different aspects of leadership that she was important uh, to the rebellion against the British was it's just amazing to read about. And uh, my, my friend Jessica Fuentes, uh, I, uh, I, when I panned over the books, uh, Maroon Societies is one of the, uh, she's also um, one of this year's um, artists in residence at TCC South. And we were talking and she suggested that Maroon Society's uh, book to me. Mm -hmm. And there's a little mention of um, Queen Nanny in that book. And I'll just reach over here and also talk about the, <laughs> the White Witch of Rose Hall that I mentioned that my friend uh, Karen Kanjimi uh, gave to me. That is a historical fiction. I was talking to my mom about the fact that I'm reading that book right now. And uh, she was like, "You, Andrea, you've been there. You remember you went to Rose Hall?" And I was like, "Yeah, I remember." Because I think it was, uh, I think it was when I was about thirteen, and we went to Jamaica. And I, so I remember uh, going on that tour, but I didn't remember that Annie Palmer, the um, plantation owner in the book, was really the name of the plantation owner, and. Um, they referenced in the Maroon Societies, the White Witch of Rose Hall, that she would kill all of her lovers and was very brutal with her slaves. Mm -hmm. And um, eventually the slaves rose up and killed her. And that's the, <laughs> that's the legend of um, Annie Palmer, the White Witch of Rose Hall, but I haven't finished the book yet. And I was like, oh, I, I didn't remember that that was really her name. She's like, yeah, why are you saying it's fiction? I'm like, well, it's a historical fiction, you know, because they, they have to fill in. They don't know what people said, but I was, I, I was like, now I realize that it is actually a historical fiction and not just a, a fiction fiction. <laughs> <laughs> But I thought that was interesting because they, um, in the Maroon Society's book, when um, there was mention of um, the White Witch, they were saying that um, cheating and infidelity was um, rampant back in those times for the British uh, planters because there were very few um, white people on the island at that time there was a lot of absentee um managing of the properties and then there were even fewer women white women on the island and so apparently there was a lot of sleeping with husbands friends and slaves and things going on and it's like oh whoa <laughs> hurt from history <laughs> So is there anything else, any, <clears throat> excuse me, any other book there, or is there any other show and tell you have for us that's related? 
Um, let me think. I um I definitely I want to talk about uh, podcasts that have influenced. I'll just list those right quick. Um, of course, I uh, in panning across the movies here, I uh, highlighted some comedy. Uh, so I listen to a lot of uh, comedians' podcasts. Marina Franklin's Friends Like Us is a really good podcast. Uh, Mark Maron's uh, Mark Maron's WTF. Dan Savage's Savage Love, uh, Stuff You Missed in History Class. In fact, I heard a really good episode about um, the Jamaican Maroons um, on that podcast. Um, to the Best of Our Knowledge is really good. Um, Black Girls with Accents with Tracy Walters and Norma Stanton is really good. And, um, or Stanton, excuse me. Uh, it's uh, a woman who's from Britain with Jamaican background and a woman who's from, uh, oh gosh, I'm going to mess that up. So I'm not even going to say, y'all should just listen to it. <laughs> um, you Made It Weird with Pete Holmes, another comedian. Uh, the Bechdel cast, uh, my friend Aaron Stafford recommended that one to me. That was really good artist friend. And uh, Comedy Bang Bang, that's really good. Um, particular episodes of podcasts that really stood out to me. Um, the Pulse, it's a good podcast in general, but um, Who Do You Think You Are? I was really amazed by that. Um, they interviewed uh, Professor Anita Foreman uh, of Westchester University, because uh, she started the DNA Discussion Project. Mm -hmm. uh, really interesting conversation about uh, social constructs and race. Um, think, I love listening to Think. Um, uh, oh my gosh, why am I turning into a senile little coot right now? Um, she's one of my heroes. Who's the host <laughs> of Think? Say again. Chris Boyd. Chris Boyd. Love Chris Boyd. Chris Boyd interviewed um, Sarah Valentine. Uh, she's the author of uh, When I Was White. And um, I have not got to read When I Was White yet, but I have it. I ordered it from Interra Bang Books. They relocated after the storm over on Inwood now. Um, and uh, I can't wait to read that book because that interview uh, really seems to highlight, um, yeah, the, just the uh, the uh, the sneakiness of white supremacy. This is mm -hmm. a black woman; she thought she was white, and um, her experience reading about her experiences. I can't wait after um, hearing a little bit about them in that interview with uh, mm -hmm. Chris Boy. Well, with the um, layering and the smells, um, I just remember when entering churches or schools, just like a a clean smell, but it's it's all it's always like a similar smell, and also with um, with church, especially on special occasions, I remember that frankincense smell. But my friend Jessica Sinks. She she mentioned, she was like, oh my gosh, you have to do the smells. You have to do the smells. And I was like, oh my gosh, yes, the smells. How can it, yes, what a fantastic idea. And then, thank goodness, you guys were like, yeah, we need to document the mopping. And Teresa Margolis, yes. So it's like, of course, well, yeah, we need to do this. So it was, it, it was just a wonderful way to complete it. Mm -hmm. it, it 
another just a great way to tie everything together and engage all kinds of senses including it being silent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it, you know it's that element of performance yeah. that maybe the public didn't see but but you did like you did it yourself and that's part of your process it's part of um like you said making it all complete mm -hmm. so it's um almost um I don't know if ritual is the right word, but just kind of like this, this pro I guess process just keeps coming to mind. Well, like uh, the, the, when, when I think about the, there's different de definitions of martyrdom. Like uh, we talked about um, Queen Nanny being an actual martyr. I mean, and I was talking about my codependency sometimes. Oh, it's so hard for me all the time. Sometimes I can get into that. <laughs> <laughs> get into that frame of mind it's like mm, Andrea, come on stop and then um and then to um uh, i there were a couple times eric was like why don't you why don't you put like a big cardboard box in there and then just stop folding all these boxes i'm like no this is part of it you gotta just really go for the martyrdom and then, <laughs> and then um when i think about yeah when y'all mentioned uh Teresa Margolis and um when I think about artists like Annette Lawrence mm -hmm. that I mentioned earlier and um Janine Antony mm -hmm. um I watched I've been watching a lot of um Art 21s lately mm -hmm. and I went back and watched hers again and Janine Antony she actually um she it was instrumental in helping me have a breakthrough with contemporary art because i was i was working at the dma at the time and um i was um coordinating volunteers for an event that was happening at the rachowski house and she was speaking that day and she was just so wonderful in speaking about her work and she had video and slides and different things of her um, doing the eyelash paintings with the mascara and um, the paintings with the hair dye and um, sitting in these troughs with a cow <laughs> drinking out of the trough while she was sitting in there and. Um, I remember really being struck by the performative aspects of that work and how eloquent she was in speaking about her work and then just having like a light bulb moment look oh <laughs> you can so what you can you can like you can do what you want you can do whatever you want <laughs> yes <laughs> and you can you can really use your body and like really get into this and i i remember just having that eureka with her um back in the day there and um mm. so yeah that that definitely um uh, also factored in somewhere and the um working at the crow collection i mean origami japanese um Oh, we talked about earlier Chinese with inventing paper in the first place. Um, also, um, the uh, Tibetan monks I was exposed to there. The um, they would come in for about a week and do the sand mandalas, mm -hmm. and then destroy the whole thing at the end of the week and distribute the sands. It's like oh, how ethereal, but also very meticulous and there was a performative nature to that too so yeah all of that all of that spinning mm -hmm. around back there too mm -hmm. and came in, came into this work I, I really especially value and see a beautiful significance in 
you mopping by yourself where it wasn't like a performance in front of a bunch of people, that it was this private ephemeral moment. I know we got footage and I know we'll be using it, but that's still very different. Um, and what I just remember us, you know, watching you and that felt like a very honored space for us to watch you do this private thing. So um, to me, it fits in so well on this air of who you are and what this work is, who you are as an artist, because the whole thing that you did is very performative. Mm -hmm. The repetition of the boxes and the sewing, all of it. Um, and all of those were primarily private moments for you as well. Mm -hmm. and, and it's, you're very present in the work without it being like a, obvious like it's it's very present in that you we see your hand hand work in the work um even with the mopping that maybe no we only me and allison saw but still like we're walking on the floor that you mopped um just getting to experience that as well so you as a person you're very present within your work as well so i think that's really beautiful thank you yeah i <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, uh, I mean, I, I get, I get um, anxious and excited about that at the same time because I can be such a freaking square. Sometimes it's like, uh, everybody can see it. You can all see it. <laughs> and then, <laughs> I don't think you're alone in that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Then, yeah, but then it's like, oh, you can't hide. You can't hide. You can't hide from anybody. And that's a good yeah. thing. It's yeah. honest and present work. And that's yeah. what we all want. Thank you. Exactly. So, Fabi, thanks so much for bringing that up. I'm really glad you did. Yes. 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 And that's what um, I remember um, looking looking back and refreshing myself too about the Teresa Margolis pieces at the um, modern mm -hmm. and that she was using that morgue water yeah. of, uh, out of Guadalajara, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, it's like, oh, again, it's like, oh, you can do anything you want and you can make these profound, just, deep statements about what's going on in our world and yeah. shine that light on it that needs to be shined on it yeah. without yeah. being preachy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Fabiola. Uh, thank you, Andrea and her little cape here that I see. Good <laughs> <Doug laughs> man! Doug man. <laughs> that, that yeah that was so fun <laughs> <laughs> so this is a lot of footage um so uh i guess we'll just talk about Fabi, how we figure this out and okay i don't need we'll talk about it later it's sure. not all on you i don't want you to feel um overwhelmed by all of it yeah, yeah. i have some ideas <laughs> Yay. Okay. Yay. Okay, I think we should go. Um, it's hard to actually. This is ab absolutely delightful experience. Um, it, is, it feels like we've had a nice hangout. Yes, totally. Yay. <laughs> so, uh, begrudgingly, I say we should probably go, um, <laughs> but we also could do it again anytime. Yay! Yes. Yeah. I'm down for that. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> over and out. All right. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.